Hi everybody and welcome back to an episode of The Free Skate. Uh, today we are going to recap two events. Um, it's been a little bit busy so I, uh, instead of doing a really late Skate Canada one, I was just gonna, you know, run through it quickly and uh, do it with the Grand Prix of France. So <clears throat> just real quick, because I'm sure you guys have uh, listened a, lo a lot about uh, Skate Canada already, so we'll just go through it quick. Men, uh, top four, Ilya Shinsato, Jun Wan Cha and Sota Yamamoto. Uh, Ilya, big score of 300 through 1.82. Uh, Shun Sato, 261.16. Jun Wan Cha, 263.1. And Sota Yamamoto, 257. So those, um, the second, third, and fourth spots were actually really close. Um, Ilya won both segments um, in the uh, event. Uh, Shin Sato was fourth in the free skate but hung on to second. Jun Wan Cha was second in the free skate and ended up third after being fourth after the short program. Uh, the top five men in the short program only had one combined under rotation, uh, but there were five in the uh, free skate. Um, Interesting judging scores in PCS I found uh, when I was running over the score sheet. Uh, judge number eight gave uh, June 6.75 on composition and 7.25 on presentation, which is shocking because he's a very, very good skater. I think he's one of the best ones actually on the, the Grand Prix circuit. Um, all the other scores for everyone's was in the eights and judge number one gave Sota a 5.75 on composition, which was the lowest score in the entire event on anything. So that I just found like super odd because it's like super out of left field and uh, was not like he like that was that's crazy like like a dude who was fourth place got the worst score in the event of composition mm, i don't know about that super weird anyways um in the women carrie sakamoto wins to 1.21 uh reno gets 192 hanu yoshida bronze medal 191 0.37 kimmy rapon 191.07 and madeline skizas Fifth place, 190.04. Second, third, and fourth were very, very, very close. Now, Madeline, the most complete event I've seen her do in years, um, if not ever, actually. She was only 1.4 off the uh, podium, which is so close. Um, she missed it on her levels. Uh, and a level four on one of her things could have been a silver medal for her. Uh, she only had one level four spin. Her step sequence was only level two. Other spins, uh, she got level threes in. Um, you need to get your your levels, especially when it sits so close. That's the difference between fifth place and, and second place. So that would have been awesome for at home to get a silver medal. Fortunately, it wasn't in the cards for her. She's really got to work on getting her levels because it's super, super un important. Um, Reno pulled a massive comeback. She won the free skate. She was 10th in the short program. So not a good short program for her. Storm back, um, if Reno had half a good of a pro short program as she did the free skate, she would have actually won the event for sure. Um, so that was, yeah, that, that was that was a big jump there. Uh, Carrie, uh, sh you know, Obviously, Carrie was lucky that the other ladies weren't perfect in the event because she could have easily lost this event. Uh, let's talk about her program for a second. Um, I am not sure what I think of it. I love Chicago and I love the musical. I love that music, all that jazz. I don't know if it's for her. Um, I think she, it's either a new program and she's she's still just going through the motions trying to figure it out or it just doesn't suit her. Um, I think you you got to have that that attitude. you got to send it to the rafters. I didn't see any of that. So again, I'm not sure if it's because it's a new program where she needs more time or, or what, but I think they really need to look at that program and make sure she's comfortable with it because I wasn't feeling it. So, I mean, it's good that she's branching out and doing something a little bit different, but I just wasn't buying it with her. Everything was a struggle in that program for her, including the, the presentation. So I'll, I'll reserve a, a judgment uh, until I see it again anyways um let's go to ice dance piper and paul win the event with a big score of 214.84 
uh, La Joie and Laga silver medal 199 and Lopreve and Brasso uh, 194.25. So that's uh, good for the French team getting on the podium, uh, getting the bronze medal. Uh, La Joie and Laga gets the silver medal. Uh, they did have a big mistake in the rhythm dance, otherwise they would have been a lot more closer to Piper and Paul. They still wouldn't have won by any means. However, uh, they would have been over 200 for sure. Uh, Gilles and Poirier, they had the highest seasonal score so far, 86.44 in the river dance, which is a massive score, 128.40 in the free dance. Uh, Chalk and Bates only had 77 in their rhythm dance, but they had a mistake. Uh, Fear and Gibson had 83.56 in their rhythm dance uh, when they did it, and 127 um, for Chalk and Bates in the free dance. Uh, and Gilson Poirier had so uh, 128.40 was Gilson Poirier and 127 was um, Chalk and Bates. Now, different judging panels, but still Piper and Paul have the edge in the score. Uh, but it's very, very, very close. Um, Greenard and Fabry 82.2 uh, for their rhythm dance that was in France uh, to compare with that. Uh, as France already happened, so we'll throw that that in there. So Grenard and Fabry had 82.2, so they currently have the third highest of the season because Fear and Gibson actually did get higher than the Italians' rhythm dance. So that's going to be a very interesting battle. Paul's open back. You don't know what to think of it. Um, I'm okay with him showing back. I just don't know if I like the way it was showed. It was, to me personally, it was a really big distraction. It took away from the program for me because all I could stare at was that hole <laughs> in, on his back. Maybe if it was like designed where it was like this or this in, in, in two sectional spots. It was just like a big like just a big pull with like fabric around it. So I wasn't really a fan of that. Uh, I think it just, I think it was a distraction. So it'd be interesting to hear what you guys think of that. Um, pairs, I, you know what? I didn't even write about pairs. Uh, I don't think pairs has been very exciting this season. Um, in Skate Canada, I believe the Canadians won the world champions, which is un not very shocking, but they even had a big struggle, uh, specifically in their free skate. And um, I guess we'll see going on, but I think the Paris fields right now, uh, not the most desirable to watch. Everything looks like a struggle from everyone. There hasn't been somebody that's like come out and been like just wowed me, except for Skate America, I think had a decent pairs um, with uh, Cam and O'Shea had a fantastic event and um, the world silver medalists were the, the Japanese team they had a really good event too but I've, everyone else that I've seen this year I'm just like mm, yeah I don't know about that that's just whatever it is what it is so let's move on to the Grand Prix of France ice dance we'll start with the bomb here ice dance shocking results Greenard and Fabry were favorited by a um, country mile to win this event and they finished second the french team lopreva and brissot win the event with 195.27 points grenard and fabley only get 189.08 brady and somerville beat reed and amber delicious for the bronze medal so the americans um i think that was an upset as well but they actually are really, really good skaters. I really like their program. They're very smooth. They're such a young team to perform. Uh, emotional song, uh, kind of slower song, but it like, it builds up, and I think they did a really, really nice job of that. Um, I wasn't very impressed with um, the Lithuanians' free dance. It just didn't catch me. It looked like it was effort. It looked like... Uh, they weren't in their element. Uh, there was level drops all over the place for them. They only had, I, I don't even know if they got a level four. I have to look at the, the sheet again. But there was level one, twos, and threes. So they they, they missed a ton of points that were on the, the table. Uh, Lupareva and Brissot, really nice free dance winners of the event. Um, also, I mean, obviously, everyone knows that the Italians had a massive mistake. And it cost them 
an unbelievable amount of points. The uh, Italians were fifth in the free skate and they hung on to a silver medal. Um, so their their program though I think is one of the most interesting ones of the year. Very costumes, very unconventional. Super unique, uh, very interesting to watch on the ice and I think they did a really really good job choreographically of portraying robots on the ice which is super ridiculous to say but I think they got the movements down and they were into it it's just really unfortunate that uh, that he stepped out uh, Marco had issues on his on his uh, step and he fell out of his twizzle and it cost them a minus three point something in GOE and a uh, lower level and they just lost a whole ton of points there. So that wasn't ideal for them. So they will be very disappointed with that silver medal uh, finish. But like I said, they had a um, very interesting program. Um, I can't imagine it being easy to portray robots on ice and the movements that they had. Uh, Charlene's hair for the win, for sure. Just the amount of gel that is in her hair must be shocking. She's probably still washing it out today. <laughs> so the French got their first ever Grand Prix win. Uh, congratulations to them. That's how the cookie crumbles. They are the rightful winners and um, you know what, maybe it'll make them hungrier for more medals in the future. So that makes them uh, easy shoe-ins for the Grand Prix Final as they did get bronze in Skate Canada. They also have a gold now in, uh, in France, which is amazing for them and the hometown team. And without the, um, you know, amazing Papadakis and Cicerone, uh, the French team reigns supreme right now. So good for them. Men, I don't even know if um, I want to talk about them, man. Like, the whole event was a dumpster fire. Just not great. Like, at all. Adam was eighth in the short program. If anyone could come back and win, it would be him. And he did. However, it wasn't in the fashion that he would have imagined it would be. He only got 246 points and he won the event. So that's saying a lot. Hashiro Shimada, 233.84. Andrew Torgashev, bronze medal. Kind of a surprise there. He is a really good skater though. 233.64. So that was very, very close between second and third. But I mean, Adam winning with 246. Any one of those boys could have not had Adam on the podium if they would have skated like half as good as they as they could but there was just falls all over the place boyang jin amazing in the short program won the short program 11th in the free skate he finished eighth overall nikolai mamola from italy second in the free skate um really interesting stat here that i wrote down nobody in the top three after the short program ended up with a medal that is super, super, super rare. I actually would be very curious to look. Has that ever happened before? Where literally nobody that was first, second, or third after the short program got a medal. That's crazy. I actually don't know if this has ever happened in a Grand Prix event before. And if it has, somebody please tell me. But I am you know, more willing to bet that it maybe hasn't. <laughs> and if it has happened, it might have been once, but like I said, I don't even know, I don't even know about that. So women, not the best event either. Um, what was the best though, was Amber Glenn's short program. Massive score, 78.14. Like that's, you're like climbing up on like what the Russians can get though, with her triple axel, which is so good. Uh, she did it really, really nice in the short program. Uh, didn't go so well in the free skate. Uh, but you know what? She she didn't have a great free skate, but she still won, which is really good for her confidence. Uh, you could hear her saying in the kiss and cry, like, oh my God, like I suck with it. I want to have to believe in myself. And she didn't have the best skate. Uh, she got 210.44. Uh, Wakaba was second. Uh, Sumiyoshi was third. What was a little bit of a dumpster fire for the ladies event too, uh, every single lady had an under rotation call in the entire event, whether it just be 
a Q or a full downgrade or an under rotation, Amber Glenn was the only one that did not have an under rotation call in the free skate. She had a fall. Pardon me. She had a fall. So that was her deduction, but she was the only lady in the entire event that didn't have a Q or an under rotation or a, a downgrade. So that's, uh, that's showing you either the tech panels are very, 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 very strict on that now, and you're really going to have to crack down on that, or uh, ladies, you got to like, you got to get training here, because that's unacceptable. You had a Grand Prix event, and every single one of you had an under rotation. That's like, that's not, that's not good. Um, so that's some analytics for you guys. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is a very fast recap. Um, I didn't want to spend too much time on this today because uh, there's just a lot of other stuff going on. Um, I hope everyone has survived uh, today uh, for reasons that you can insinuate that I am saying. It doesn't have to do with Canada. Figure skating. I think you can figure it out. Um, anyways, um, our next event uh, for the Grand Prix is coming up this weekend, and I hope to have a video out really uh, soon after that and not wait a few days like I have been. Um, follow me on X or Twitter. I can't say X. Oh, it's so weird. Uh, the Free Skate is my handle. You can find me, um, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe and like. Bye.